All right, gonna do something different again today. Um, I've just been refitting this whole fairing screen, this bar, everything here, these bars underneath. And this is never set quite right, this thing here. Um, once everything's all tensioned and, and sort of set up, right, it doesn't sit down very tightly. And it does tend to want to pull to one side unless it's in. But because it's not always in, it can bounce up and come out like that. It's all the way out. It's, yeah. it's not that great. So what I thought I would do, let's uh, pull it out for a start. Let's see if I can improve on that. Now, I've always made an assumption that this is the original part, and as far as I'm aware, this is. Um, it's got this plastic or nylon, whatever it is, bushing there. It's got a step in it like that. It just sits there. And it has an O-ring that sits in a little um, channel there, but it doesn't fit well at all. So I'm looking at how I can improve this, make something a little bit better and the first thing I'm going to do is make it make one of these but make it a little bit thicker maybe twice as thick that sort of thing and I'll make this bit here much longer see one side has to spin either either the inside bit spins or the outside bit spins well I guess by that I mean I mean this piece either squishes down tightly onto that and stays there or it squishes tightly into that and stays there, and then the other side is loose. One or the other. Don't know. But that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna make something out of a piece of a seagull to replace this. And it'll certainly be taller. In fact, as, th as thick as this entire piece would be about right. And it would sit pretty tight. Not tight, but much more securely. So that's how it should sit, but it doesn't. So I'm going to have it sitting up something like that. All right. So let's get started. Great. So that wasn't even recording. All right. So I, I don't know what I missed, but I missed probably everything. This part is one inch diameter, 25, just under 25. And so I'm taking this piece of acetyl down to that diameter. And I've just taken a piece off, which was a millimeter off the diameter or a half millimeter off the radius. And so that was a half millimeter depth of cut and it just was perfect. So I'm just going to do another one. And I'm thinking I'll do it at uh, a deeper depth of cut. Let's do it. I'm using the auto fade. Yeah. If only everything would cut so so beautifully as a seed oil. Two four nine eight, two four nine one, two four nine four, nine three, basically that. This is two four eight three, that sort of size. That's fine. This is the bit now that needs to be snug both ways, sort of the inside needs to be snug on here. And the outside needs to be snug into that um, thing. So we're going to go 11.8. I'll drill the hole and, and bring it out further and further until we hit, hit the size that is snug. through to the 
side. Check it. Yep, it's too tight. And we take our boring bar. That's it. That's it. That's the bit on top, like that. And this is new piece is gonna sit, gonna be taller there. And it's gonna come over and it's gonna come down. It's gonna come down a lot further than it was. But in fact, I want it to come out a little bit. Something like that. And the idea is you push it in and it clips itself in. And I'm gonna cut this is now viewed from underneath. I'm going to cut like that and like that so that there's a little each quarter piece clips moves when you clip it in. So I need to take this down to the bigger size, the size that's going to be clipped. That's uh, 3.5. The hole is 15. There we go. That's the uh, thing it goes into, and it's really just sitting there. It's not tight. And I can measure that thickness of that edge. 301, 317, so a little bit over 3. And the diameter, just under 15. Um, right, now I've got just under 25, just over 16. So I'm using this like a grooving tool. I'm going to use it here. Just using it to give it that a nice face, which worked. And I'm going to be using this now to cut down as far as just tick, tick under 15. We're on 16 now. That's one mil off the diameter. That's it. And now we need about three millimeters worth of that. Let's check that again. The nth time. 3.25. So not really three, but a bit more. So we'll go in. under. If I really want it to click, it sort of needs to be under 15. And then it sits loose on this side and firm on the other side. Uh, can we see what I'm doing? Not very well. There's my one inch. There's my 14.8 down there. 
that again out here, and that's my 16.2 there, and that's my whatever the hell it is in the middle. And I want to jump for that edge a little bit, and I want to taper this front edge a little bit somehow. Not sure how. Um, you could freehand it, and let's see why not. Good, that's nice. Snug, not too far apart. Now, how high is it going to be? I was really just going to give it an extra, extra, like double height easily of this one. I don't want to have to sort of sand it down. <laughs> Two mil. Four mil. That's done. Take all that off, just in case. See if I was going to chamfer, I'd do it now. Look at that, it came off with a very nice little flange there. <laughs> that one in there. Just to clean that edge up a little bit. So, the last thing is I want it to be able to clip down into that. Well, it doesn't need to come out, does it? Once it's in, it's in, and it's just a firm fit. So I could do a variety of things. Um, I was going to slot it, slot that way and that way, so it just clips in. But I think I wanted this side to be the loose side, didn't I? So we'll slot it. I mean, I could just take a hacksaw to it, but I want to do it, you know, properly. So how do I do that properly? I want to run a slitting saw past it. I need to do it like that. The slitting saw is sitting like that, so this would have to be held like that. And I can't really hold it like that because now it's, <laughs> I've done this again. I shouldn't have parted it off until I did the cuts, idiot. If I could get the slitting saw low enough, I could do that, but I don't think I can. Nope. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out how to cut the slots that I want into the end of this. I want to cut down like that and then 90 degrees down there. And I can't clamp it. I've got no way to clamp it. I should have left it on the um, on the bar before I parted it. And then I could have used, you know, held that in the vise and use a slitting saw. I did think I could use waste some more acetal and make a rod and shove it on a rod and then clamp that and then I thought why don't I use this brush handle shove it on that and obviously this handle is crooked I mean it's tapered but I'm not going to care about that I'm just going to squeeze down on it because it's plastic how's that for precision that's what we paid all this money for all right that'll do it <laughs> That will do it. There we go. That's the idea. Let's try that.
<laughs> it's turned out pretty well, hasn't it? Yeah, so the little issue is there. It now has an extra little slot right there, which is a, a little tiny nick there, half a mil. Bit irritating, but it's pretty tiny. So here we go. That's going to go in there. And I can see my point 0.8 is a little bit tight. It should really be a mil. Do I take some more off there or do I take a larger slots? And I take something off the length, which would be similar. Or I just push harder. Oh, that's a perfect fit. Yeah, <laughs> that fits real well. And so that is going to shove in there. And uh, the whole thing will be dramatically more solid than it was before. And yet I get a nice, nice slick movement there. Oh, well, that's it. All right, let's go over to the bike and try this out. Okay, now this is going to be going on like that. Do I need to do anything? That's what we're going to give it, a silicone. Now, where am I going to put that little notch? Yeah, it's hard to see if it's down here. So let's try that. Well, once I shove this in, it's probably going to stay in there for a long time. Yeah, just a firm fit. And on the sides here at the moment, i um, changed what I'm doing. I used to use a steel washer on rubber and then against the fiber glass. Now I'm going one of these, a nylon washer, to spread the load with the rubber one behind it to take the unevenness of the bar. Unevenness by that I mean that it's not dead perpendicular to the surface of the fiberglass. So that's my stack. On the other side I just use, use a nylon washer that hides itself underneath the edge. tighter. <laughs> it actually feels, feels like it's part of the bike now. Yeah, that was always going clatter, 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 pop. We like that. Definitely firms it up. The way I've made it so tight, I could have actually left the height as it was, but I did raise it because that was the place where this bar naturally ended up. I didn't want to bend the bar further. It looks about right to me because if you bend it then all of a sudden you're changing these angles again and uh, it's already as far as I think it should be. And uh, So that to me is a satisfactory solution. Okay so that's another tiny job done. Something that always bugged me and I wanted to do and uh, I realized oh got some acetyl. I can do it on the lathe. Let's do it. And so there we go. Very happy with that. All right. Like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Catch you next time.